Hey, good morning. Uh, yeah, there we are. Yeah, we are. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Can you hear me now? Good morning. Hey, it's about the third time she said good morning today. Brother, don't make me rebuke you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be with you again this morning in Sunday Fellowship. It is so good. If you got the email last night, you know some of the things we've been happening with us this week, and one of the major things that happened, of course, Chris and my visiting, but as I said in the email, my computer crashed. Uh, I'm trusting the Father, I need you guys to pray for us. Brother Jim has, we, we've, we've taken it to the Jim Near God of Computer Hospital. <laughs> we've taken it to the Jim Near God of Computer Hospital to see if he can uh, buy lay hands on it and raise it from the dead. The hard drive, I think, is uh, went out, but we have so much data and information on that system till I really don't want to look. All of our past videos, well, almost all of them, uh, because some of them we got up on YouTube we can bring down, but uh, <clears throat> all of our information, all of my notes. Well, fortunately, you did download a lot of notes already onto that. For Ghana, or maybe it was audio recordings. It's audio know. recordings. But anyway, you did do that. Yeah, but all of my notes, the new book, everything is 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 on that. So, uh, if you guys will pray for us, that the Father will minister to Brother Jim and will retrieve the information. Maybe pull a hard drive and retrieve the information if if we can, because that's a lot of stuff to lose. Uh, uh, I really don't want to do that. So. How's it been going with you, honey? It's been good. You sure? Mm hmm I know. It's been good. Carry on. <laughs> it's been good. <laughs> Don't you? I, listen, I like to do that, too. I like this live stuff. When Curtis is up here, I can't do that. See, I look at Curtis too long. People start thinking, what's he looking at him that way for? You know? So I can't do that when Curtis is sitting here. No, Curtis just takes up the slack and starts talking. So... <laughs> So it works out fine. <laughs> well, before we go into the, the, the uh, lesson this morning, before we go into the message, uh, you want to pray for us, sweetie? Sure. Yeah. Good. Gracious Father, thank you for giving us this time to come together. Pray for the message you have for us, the word you have for specifically us as individuals today. I pray for David, um, who has been given this word. I thank you, Father, as your son in Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, there's going to we have uh, some notes this morning. Not not too many, but uh, well, we've got some notes. And that's, I think if we if this moves as I trust the Father, it will. We're going to run out of notes, but we still have some information to go. So we're really going to go kind of like we used to a couple few years ago. I didn't use a lot of notes. I really taught from the revelation of the mystery, and this note thing came along as. People wanted notes. Everybody used to hear, used to take notes. Sylvia used to be writing notes, Catherine writing notes. And so we kind of moved into something else more. Uh, you don't have to write as much. But today, if you want to keep up after these notes run out, and I think they will, uh, you can uh, maybe take some notes and uh, keep up with us. Had a great time of fellowship this week. Uh, like I said, with Chris and my Linda, had a good fellowship lunch with. Uh, uh, Curtis and Jenny had some great things on the revelation of the mystery. We had some things before the foundation of the world. We had a great time of fellowship. Uh, I did some drawing on a napkin, and uh, they took the napkin and the notes and everything I brought, and Curtis this morning came with a whole new, whole new diagram from, from the notes. It, the revelation of his mystery of the napkin notes. <laughs> <laughs> the napkin has now become a book. The breakfast napkin is a very important yes, that's true. place people put God has down. moved by the Spirit through napkins for centuries. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he stopped Great that. ideas go down on that. Uh, napkin. go on napkins, man. Yeah, whole, whole, whole corporations was done on napkins. As a matter of fact, I heard that either Steve Jobs or, or uh, it was Steve Jobs, wasn't it? Or Bill Gates. Or Bill Gates. One of them sat down, I think it was Jobs, sat down and did a, a thing for for the the computer uh, ideas they had on a napkin, and it turned into an empire. An empire, 
well, so there you go. Well, the napkin. Well, that's all we need is for, for Chris to have this little drawing from that napkin and turn it into an empire. <laughs> Maybe the empire will strike back. <laughs> Just. Well, it's all about Christ, and Christ is all in all. He might as well right. be the empire, too. Right, right, right. That's true. That's true. Not logical, but true. Anyway, honey, let's get started. We're going to start this morning. We're going to talk about the Apostle Paul and the idea of what he's talked about on my gospel. And he said, my knowledge of the mystery. Uh, that's been an ongoing idea mm-hmm. uh, in the revelation of the mystery of Christ for quite some time in my thinking. And the father brought that to me, I guess, from our discussion last week when Jenny was up here with us. I had this idea about my gospel. And I didn't say anything about it because one time, but... Uh, we're going to look at that this morning and look at Paul's statement of my gospel and why this man would have the nerve to say my gospel when he wasn't even with the 12. Yeah, the boy, he, the he boy was out hitting people over the head and throwing rocks at them and taking them into prisoners and all kinds of, he was just doing all kinds of stuff. And then he winds up talking about my gospel as though he has a gospel that was different or better than than the original apostles, you know, the 12. And then he went on to say something like, my knowledge of the mystery. So people, I mean, and and today, we don't hear preachers and teachers using that terminology at all. It's written there, but I don't see where they read that and read it with the understanding, with any understanding, because most believe, I can tell you for a fact, most preachers, most Bible teachers that, they, that, that are called Bible teachers, I don't know how that came about, but that's an oxymoron. How in the world would they not use or understand my knowledge of the mystery in the idea of being in Christ? That's, 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 that's a phenomenon because nobody wants to acknowledge that it is still a mystery today. If you say it's a mystery today, that means you don't know something. And nobody wants to be caught with the supposedly a preacher or been to a seminary or Bible college or some religious institution to say, well, yes, this is God's final word. And he's not saying anything outside this. Most do not acknowledge there is a mystery. It is still a mystery. If it wasn't so, the Holy Spirit wouldn't be revealing it. So no having one. a doctorate in theology <clears throat> no. doesn't do it. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. A bachelor's of theology won't do it. A certificate <laughs> in Bible studies won't do it. There's nothing no man can give you that will bring about the understanding of my knowledge of the mystery from Paul's point of view. Okay? So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> you want to read some of that, honey? Okay. Now, before Catherine starts to read, I want to let you know that because I was my computer went down, I was up so late with this, there might be a few typographical errors. Did you hear just Jenny? A few, just Did a few. you hear Jenny over there? I didn't hear Jenny. I heard her. She made fun of me and my notes. Well, I just won't put any on your seat next Sunday. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm going to even move that seat over here so you can sit over here versus over there because it's beginning to look like religion to me. Every time somebody comes in, she flop. likes that seat. That's, that's just good, it. That's a good vantage point. That's just it. See, you got to move around so you so you're thinking you get get up and move. Yeah, get up and move. <laughs> okay. Shall we begin? Yes, let's okay. begin. What is what is Paul's my gospel and my knowledge of the mystery? Now, uh, this is Romans sixteen twenty five. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. The Apostle Paul had unique and bold statements that no other writer in the Bible made. His first was the statement, my gospel. He went on to say, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ according to my gospel in Romans 2.16. He would go on to use that statement a total of nine times in his epistles. And he didn't just say my gospel, but he included the words according to. That's pretty specific and unique, wouldn't you say? But he also said something else which so many read right on by or just flat out ignore. 
His statement is this, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3, 4. He said, my knowledge of the mystery of Christ. That, beloved, is a loaded statement. Far too many don't like the word mystery. It means that we don't know something. And very few in the church today will acknowledge that there is a mystery, much less the need for any revelation. Mm. That's what we were saying a few minutes ago. <clears throat> when you say that, when, you t when, when people approach Paul, when they read the Bible, they act as though because they read that word, they understand what it means. Well, it was a mystery back then, but 2,000 years later, we got this. We got this. We don't, we don't need no stinking mystery. We got this. We, I can read, so therefore, if I can read. We got this. We got this. And I want to tell you, that's not the truth. You don't have it. But we'll see in a minute. Keep going. Okay. Why did he make it, the statement, and what right did he have to make his statement, my gospel? As stated above, Paul made these unique statements nine times. Let's take a look at these verses. Romans 2 and uh, 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Let's pause. I want to back up to uh, Romans 2.16. There's, there's something in this that Romans 2.16 that I just want to touch on for just a minute. He said, in the day, which means there's coming a day or a time, which references the time, right? Yes. There will, be, there will be a day or a time when God will judge the secrets of men's hearts by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Now, let's look at that for just one second. Paul just made a statement that disqualifies the law. No one will be judged based on their keeping of the law. That's not what he says, right? He didn't say God will judge the hearts of men based on the law. Right. He disqualified the law and he said according to, he didn't say according to Jesus Christ. He said the secrets of man are by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So he has made the gospel which he is preaching relevant to God's judgment. You got that, Curtis? Relevant to God's judgment. There'll be a come, there'll come at a time that God will do something to men by Jesus Christ, but not just by Jesus of Nazareth, per se. Paul is saying, according to, this will be based on the gospel that Paul said, which is my gospel. Mm -hmm. My gospel. That's a pretty, that's a pretty bold statement, Jim. Don't you think that is a that is a bold statement for a man to make? God's going to do something to men according to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't know too many people who can say that. I, I don't know anybody in the Bible who wrote something like that that was going to stand up and say it's going to be according to my gospel we'll discuss the definition of the word gospel here in a few but go ahead and we've already read 1625 he uses that word in 1625 again according to my gospel he says listen to what he says in 1625 look at that now to him which is now to him which is god the father <clears throat> that is that has the power to establish you he is saying god is going to establish you by what According to not your belief system, not where you go to church, not what you believe most of your life, like we talked about last week. He will establish you according to my gospel. Paul used the words according to and my gospel in the same breath. He should have choked on that. <laughs> he didn't choke. He said, according to my gospel. I don't know who mean it. I don't know anybody who would say that. Jesus never made that statement. Mm -mm. according to my gospel. So you let it slip by, didn't you? She slipped that on you, didn't you, brother? <laughs> according to my gospel. So Paul, he is saying in two verses here, he's made not only a dynamic statement, he's made a specific statement according to what God's going to do by something he has said. My gospel, not not a gospel, 
but my gospel. Let's go ahead on to the next few verses. Second um, Timothy two eight. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Mm, mm, mm. First Corinthians fifteen one. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Mm -hmm. Galatians 1.11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Now let's pause with that one. Let's pause with that one. He said the gospel that was preached of me is not after man. In other words, Paul, who was taught under, under the great, uh, uh, Jewish, Jewish teacher, the Pharisee Gamaliel, which was known throughout Israel of being a great teacher, he did not say, the gospel that I preach I got from Gamaliel being taught as a Pharisee. So here he's saying that the gospel he had is not, he didn't get it from another, he didn't get it from Peter, James, and John. He didn't get it from those who were apostles before him. He didn't get it from any human being. He said, it's not of man. Not any man gave me the gospel which I'm preaching. So that kind of lets you know that when he says my gospel, it was something that was given to him specifically. Most don't, most don't, buy, most don't receive that. Most cannot grab that understanding because, one, there is no mystery, so therefore there's no need of revelation. And Paul just said, uh, well, at least in this particular passage, <clears throat> He said he didn't get it from man, so it had to come by what? Revelation. Revelation. We'll get to this in a second, but you will not have a gospel that is not after man uh, 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 until you receive the revelation that God has given in Christ Jesus. All gospels other than that is what Paul calls another gospel, <clears throat> and it is a curse, which we'll get to in a second. Because mm -hmm. I, I see, and this is from the revelation of this mystery. There are a lot of preachers. Paul said, if anyone, if anyone comes to you preaching any other gospel other than which I have preached unto you or we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Let him be anathema. Let him be cursed. Let him go to hell. I, I see out there in religion right now, there is a lot of people, Sunday morning services, that has anathema written on it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying that in the context that they have heard the truth of the gospel. If they haven't, then Paul is not talking to them. He's only talking about the ones who know the gospel which he preached. Mm -hmm. If anybody come to you with any other gospel other than we preached unto you. So once you've heard the message of Christ in you, the hope of glory, then you're moving toward an atom. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Pretty strong. It is. It's pretty okay. strong. Just, just checking. I want to make sure. Okay, shall I continue? Yeah, please. Galatians 2 and 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now let's pause. I'm going to throw this a little quick something on this. <clears throat> Paul here is in Jerusalem. He's at the, at, at the cornerstone of the church here. The early church got started in Jerusalem. Why? Because the first believers were, were Jews. The first believers that were called Christians were Jews. Now, I'm going to say this. Paul's gospel, this is contrary to what most of us have learned. I, I learned this later on from the Father by the Spirit, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. But Paul, in all of his writings, never used the word Christian. And there's a reason he didn't use the word Christian. Uh, we talked about this. His gospel, my gospel, did not include the idea of the word Christian. Because that's something that Paul understood that most do not use today. Everybody is a Christian today based on what they believe, how they grew up, where they came from. It's always a, a Christian. Paul never used it. Now, you might say, well, Paul didn't use the word Christian, but he gave the meaning of it. That, that's true. But he, he didn't use the word Christian for a specific reason. You know why he didn't use the word Christian? You know why he didn't. You know why he didn't use the word Christian? You know why he didn't use the word Christian? Do you know why he didn't use the word Christian? He didn't use the word Christian because when they were first called Christians, if you go back to Acts chapter 11, they were dispersed and sent out all over the, the, the country. 
all over the countryside there because dispersion came in Jerusalem. So all the believers in Jerusalem were dispersed throughout the lands. They wouldn't go, so God had to send <laughs> the Romans in there to break all that up. Y'all mm -hmm. been sitting there. He said, go out in all the words and preach God. They had a good thing going in Jerusalem, so they're all sitting around eating and drinking and having fellowship and making songs. I'm and not God, going. I'm not going. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's, it's good here. We got good fellowship here. We don't need to get out and go anywhere. Yeah. Go out in all the words and preach God. Uh-uh, God. You've been doing signs, wonders, and miracles here in Jerusalem. We're going to stay right here because a lot of people here, they need to know who Jesus' and Messiah was. God said, okay, one more time. Get up and go. Mm-mm. We're not going. <laughs> So Rome came in and broke that stuff up. They dispersed. It says in Acts chapter 11, when they dispersed, they went out and preached the gospel to the Jews only. Mm -hmm. They did not see anything. Now, Acts chapter 10, we get Peter preaching at Cornelius' place, right? So the Gentiles technically really hadn't come in until Cornelius. But right now, they're preaching to the Jews only. What, who do you think they were talking about in in Acts chapter 11, further on down, when they were first called Christians at Antioch. Jews. Mm -hmm. Paul knew this. Paul knew this. That's why he never used the term. You can find, and I wrote it down uh, in my notes in the computer. <laughs> but I wrote it down. There was like seven, six or seven times they used the term that way. People of that way. He... Uh, people of the way of the they had, all, they had a name uh, for those who believed Jews who had believed Jesus was the Messiah sent by God. That that's that's good. So they were called Christians. So when you get in Acts, when uh, Paul is talking, I think Paul is talking to Felix when he says, "You almost convinced me to be a Christian." That man was sitting in a room. Judging Paul based on accusations brought by other Jews about the gospel which he was preaching, who denied the law of Moses. So he was confronting Jews about a Jewish issue. And Christianity was a Jewish issue at that hour. You, you follow? So when he said, you almost convinced me to be a Christian, Paul said, I wish they you were all as I am without these bonds. He never said, I wish you would become a Christian. He said, I wish you was all as I am without these bonds. What do you mean as I am? Christ living in you. Now, we can take that and make it the word Christian, but there is nowhere in his epistles, out of all he wrote, that he used that term because he understood what that meant. And to, to him, to take that to the Gentiles... And in use that term in the Gentiles, when Jews already used conversion for Gentiles, he did not want the Gentiles coming in the way the Jews had brought them in before. How? Converting them, baptizing them, washing them, and converting them into Christianity. He knew something that they didn't know about God putting Christ in them, so he did not use that term Christian. Now, you can search it out all you want. But you will never find in all of his epistles, no matter who he wrote to, he never used the term. And the word Christian is only used in the Bible four times. Peter used it. She used it in Acts twice. And Peter used it. So when Paul is dealing with my gospel, he's not talking about the same thing that Peter is talking about. But we'll get to that in a second. So in, Acts, in, in Galatians chapter 2, he said, the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. And it did not include the word Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, that's hard. That's very hard for, for people to, to acknowledge. But I'm not, I'm not going to argue with, with anybody. If you can read your Bible, you'll find that Paul never used that term. If you can read, you'll find Paul never used that term. And this is the reason he didn't use it, because he didn't want the Gentiles to be identified with a, what was known at the time a Jewish sect. Christians were known as a sect of Judaism. And they would find there as long as they, 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 they were a sect of Judaism. Once they moved out from under that blanket, there came a lot more things apart from that because Rome only acknowledged Judaism and all the sects that Judaism had under it, Sadducees, all these sects were fine. But when, when, when believers moved out from under the blanket of Judaism, then that's when they started getting tremendous persecution because Rome, that was against the Roman government and they, they became targets. Hmm. 
Okay, let's let's get a couple more verses. Come on, let's let's move, honey. Uh, Second Corinthians four three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Mm. Other writers didn't include this knowledge because God kept it hidden until He revealed it, according to His purpose, intent, plan, and timing. Paul's gospel, or good news, or glad tidings, hinged on a specific revelation. From Christ Himself, mm -hmm. Paul's gospel was first and foremost a message of the person of Christ. He could not escape this overwhelming revelation, mystery, and message. This is one of the reasons he was so misunderstood and, and persecuted. Not only did Paul boldly say and use the words "my gospel," he also stated there was a mystery of Christ, and Paul had this knowledge given. Ephesians 3, 3 to 4, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in, a, in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Let's pause. Let's pause for a second. This man just said something. L let's look at that verse. Let's look at that verse for just a second. He said that by revelation, he, that's the pronoun, who's he? Peter? Is it Peter? No. Is it James? No. How about dear brother John? No. You sure? You over there, amen, sister, but who's he? God the Father. No? He, he made in this case, is Christ. Mystery. Okay. It is Christ. It, Jesus Christ revealed himself to Paul and gave him something. That's what Paul said. I received it not of man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when he said by revelation, he Christ made known unto me the mystery. When you read in few words, you, uh, when, when you read, you might understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, not the mystery about him, but the mystery of him the mystery of Christ himself. Mm -hmm. So he made a statement here, another bold statement, that he had a knowledge that Peter didn't have. He had a knowledge that no one else had. Now, people don't read the Bible. We don't read the New Testament. We don't read Paul's epistles from that understanding. We read Paul's epistles from a human intellect point of view, or a psychological, or philosophical, or academic point of view. We read it from reading it, from our knowledge of words that we read. Right. Our knowledge of words. When I read the word, when you read, you might understand my knowledge. Well, I know what when I'm reading. When I'm reading, because Paul is telling me he under, uh, he, what he understands, I understand what the word understand means. Jenny, I understand what understand means. <laughs> so when I read that, ain't no mystery in that. I must be getting stirred up. I am? Okay. So that. My knowledge of the mystery. Well, I know what the word mystery is. Let's look at that for just one second. You know what the word mystery is in the Greek? Got my other little set of notes out. Good thing I printed this before my computer went out. You ain't, you're not going to find it over there, brother. It's not there. You're not going to find it. Jim's not going to find it either. My knowledge of the mystery. The word mystery is the Greek word mysterion. It's the Greek word mysterion. <clears throat> it means, uh, where's my notes here? Is this the one you want with coffee on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It, it's, uh, is that it? Yeah, it is it. Thank you. How did, I, how did you get that? It's the Greek word mysterion. It implies and means knowledge with hell something that is hidden or not known or understood. It is knowledge which is outside the range of assisted natural apprehension, which means it is outside of what? Outside of what you think, what you feel, and what you believe. Mm -hmm. It can only be made known by divine revelation and made known in a manner and at the time appointed by God and only to those who are illuminated by the Holy Spirit or by his spirit. That's what the word mysterion means in the Greek. 
So when Paul uses the word mystery, he's talking about something that is outside of human what? Comprehension. Mm -hmm. So much for Bible college. So much for seminary. So much for uh, intellectual ability. So much for academic acumen. So much for whatever you want to, to whatever you want to say, it is outside of human ability to perceive and understand what God is saying unless he himself does what? Reveals it. Reveals it. It's simple as that. I know that's simple, but that is hard to grasp because most preachers, especially the bigger the name is, the, the greater the idea is that what they're saying is based on their knowledge of the Bible. And I want to say this to you. If you, if you fall in the category just forgive me and pray for me, okay? Just pray for me because God will help me to see uh, one day anyway. God will help me see that no matter who you are, without the revelation from the Holy Spirit, you will read the Bible and you will still be blind and all you'll have is what you believe it says to you. Right. That's what you'll have. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's keep reading. Oh, back to the original. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right there. Wow. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> <laughs> that was timely. <laughs> Just who does he think he, uh, think he is saying things like, my knowledge and the mystery of Christ? After he didn't walk and talk with Jesus of Nazareth. After all, he did not walk and talk with Jesus of Nazareth. He wasn't there for all the signs, wonders, and miracles that Jesus did. Again, Paul would say, No, I, I didn't know Jesus after the flesh, so my knowledge does not come from what he did in Israel before the cross. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Smack him. <-a> ya. <laughs> Christ revealed himself apart from all of that so that... Um, so that my knowledge does not come from what he did for Israel before the cross. Christ revealed himself apart from all that so that um, I could teach and preach him and the new man and the new creation gospel, which comes from who he is now. Yes. Want to read that verse? 1 Corinthians 15, 8 through 10. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Mm -hmm. For I am the least of the apostles mm -hmm. that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Mm -hmm. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 9, 1, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? And not ye my work in the Lord? Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth Know we him no more. So that, that, that brings us to a place to let us know what Paul said. No, I did not walk with Jesus of Nazareth. But I've seen him. Mm -hmm. How do you see him? This is after the resurrection. Right. This is after years after he'd been going back to, to, to the father's house. Mm -hmm. So Paul is saying something here. He's saying, have I not seen the Lord? Have he not talked to me? Mm -hmm. hey, was I not an apostle? Was I not what I was born? He chose me. Did he, that's where we get the term. You, how many of you know what the term baker's dozen mean? You know what the term baker's dozen? What does it mean? Thirteenth. How many apostles did Jesus choose? Thirteen. Original twelve plus Paul. And that was Paul. He was number thirteen. Jesus chose. Now there were others who were classified as apostles, but Jesus personally chose twelve and then after the resurrection, he came back and chose Paul. Paul was the baker's dozen. You never thought about that. You know what, sometimes where these things come from. Just thought I'd throw it in there as a, as a little sidebar to keep you well, on your toes. Judas was dying. He, he killed himself. You're right. That's why he was the baker's dozen. Mm -hmm. Because he was the one that was going to be 
Well, no, but he was the thirteenth. He was the thirteenth. Jesus chose twelve, mm -hmm. and then came back. He said, "I was an apostle chosen what out, out of, of season, time. out of due time." Right, right, right. Okay, let's go on, babe. Okay. Um, Paul's knowledge. Paul's knowledge of the mystery of Christ yielded the heart and mind of God. This knowledge is revealed when we read Paul's epistles. There is a specific phrase he uses which confirms this new knowledge. Paul uses the word in Christ and establishes the in Christ position. This position is where God has chosen all of humanity to be placed. The in Christ knowledge and truth of the person of Christ is the most often used doctrinal statement in Paul's writings and in the Bible. It is used or stated over 300 times, with the majority of those times primarily identifying union with and in Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul's knowledge of the mystery of Christ revealed that God would create a new kind of man, one that is born from the spirit of Christ and the spirit of man being joined together and becoming, and these two becoming one. This new union would bring forth a new creation or another person still living in the same old body of flesh and blood. Wow, I wonder where we've seen this before. Again, this is a mystery. No one knew before, Paul, that God was intending to put his seed within the human and birth his own children. This is why um, he could say, mm -hmm. my knowledge of the mystery of Christ. Mm -hmm. But does all of this affect you and me as humans and believers in Christ? Okay, this is where the notes end. This is where we get, that's what I told you before we got started. Well, no, there's lots of them right there, baby. Oh, I, I guess. You skipped over it. I did? Yeah. How did I do that? When you turn the page. Oh. Oh. You got it. Maybe it's it's a whole page. It's a whole page of verses, okay? Yeah, I know, but it's, in, it's misplaced. It, it didn't print right. Oh. It didn't. Mm -hmm. We still want to read this, though. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This really goes back to the end of, of, of page one when we're talking about the verses that includes my oh, gospel. So this should have been the next page. Right. Well, would you like to intro this? What is, what is These are the rest of the seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll finish up the seven that used the phrase my gospel. These are the last two. That's fine. I, I'm good with that. The first shall be last and the last shall be. Something like that. Okay, yeah. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians 2.14. Whereunto, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, whether Paul used the term my gospel or our gospel, or the gospel which I preached, or the gospel which we preach, the gospel doesn't change because the pronoun changes. Right? right? Curtis, you follow that? Gospel. The gospel doesn't change because the pronoun of my, our, we, or I. The pronoun only identifies the means by which the gospel that he preached came forth. Okay? Go ahead. Was the gospel he preached different? Yes, it was. He said his gospel was not the same gospel as Peter. Galatians 2, 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them that were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Mm -hmm. Galatians 2, 7. But contrariwise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1 and 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, let's look at those verses. I just, we've already looked at Galatians 2.2. 2. We've, we've been on Galatians 2.2. 2. I want to look at two, uh, Galatians 2.7 and the following of Colossians 1.27. Galatians 2.7 gives us two gospels he said mm -hmm. when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me and 
the gospel of the circumcision was as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter. This is where everybody who wants to tie the Bible together errs. This is where another gospel comes into play. You, let me, and I said this to you before, I'm going to say it again. When they were called Christians, Curtis, they were called, who were called Christians first? Jews. Why? Because Jesus came to the Jews, it started there. Well, you're right, he did. And most don't even, I mean, people read that all the time. We read, we take Jesus' words and we just make it, we just read it as though we understand it. Just For blow by things. Blow by, just whew. I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said that when he sent out the 70, he said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Do not go to the Gentiles. Do not go to the Samaritans. He told him, don't go to the Samaritans. Don't go to the Gentiles, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. So why do we actually take everything Jesus said and make and apply it to everybody when he did not come? He said, I didn't come for you. When, remember when the, when the Syrophoenician woman wanted Jesus to heal, she was a servant of a Jew. She was a Gentile woman. She said, Lord, my daughter's sick. Can you heal her? I understand you a healing man. <laughs> I understand you got some power. I'm watching you heal all these Jews. Can you, can you give a sister something to deal with? I got a child that's sick. He said, look, baby. <laughs> look here. I'm here. Should I cast the bread of the children to the dogs? The Gentiles were known as dogs to the Jews. You can make that lap puppies. You can make that anything you want. When he said that, the Jews treated the Gentiles as what? Dogs. So when he made that statement, shall I give the bread of the children? What children? The children of Israel. She said, but Lord, yo, bro, the dogs even eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Jesus said, hmm, that's a good one. I get you got me. You got me. <laughs> you, you're right. Because I, I can. Yep, they do. Go ahead on. Your, 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 daughter's, your daughter's made hope. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. He did not treat her as another Jew. We blow by that. So we pick up things. When, when, the, when the gospel went out in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, it went to the Jews. Those who were there to celebrate the, not the Passover was there, but 50 days later, which is Pentecost, is after 50 days after the Passover, you have Pentecost. Jesus appeared to the disciples <clears throat> within the first 40 days after the Passover. It was 40 days. When he told them to go to the upper room and pray, they only had 10 days to do that. Look it up. He was there 40 minus 50 is 10. <laughs> Simple mind, they couldn't do that. Peter got, a, Peter got all stirred up and stuff, and they wanted to get somebody to replace Judas. So they brought in, they brought in uh, Matthias. But they had 10 days, and on the day of Pentecost, Jews from all over the world were gathered in Jerusalem, and that's when Peter stood up and did his thing. Well, when they left, they took the gospel that Peter preached, and they went back to who had believed, and they went back and they preached Jesus as the Messiah to Israel. They found their Messiah. They believed on Jesus of Nazareth, who was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That was their salvation at the time. And but, but on top of that, Peter says, repent and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. I won't go into that, but that's that's another that's another statement that everybody grabs and reaches and act like they're talking to everybody. He was not. There's a reason why he said repent and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. It was to Israel. So when you get to Acts chapter 11, when they go out and preach the gospel to Jews only, that's what they were doing. They were preaching Jesus. God has sent the Messiah, the one we've been waiting on. The, the law and the prophets spoke about him. That wasn't a message for the Gentiles. So when they were called Christians, that was the reason why Paul didn't use that term. So when you get to this place here, the gospel that Peter preached to the circumcision wasn't the same gospel that the Gentiles were supposed to have. 
Mm-hmm. You don't know how many churches today, people are, right now at this moment, people are standing up tying the Old and New Testament together. The Gentiles had no Old Testament. They had no, no, no uh, Pentateuch, the first five books. They had no law and prophets. They didn't have that. But we want to make it as though they had that. They did not have that. That's why when Paul used the term my gospel, it is so specific, so unique. Anybody, he could be preaching to anybody, but it was for the Gentiles because he said, listen, in, in, in Colossians 1.27, to whom God has made known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. What is this mystery, Paul? The one among the Gentiles. What is that, brother? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Peter did not preach that message. Mm -mm. The Gentiles saw that. They bought into it. And if you hung around Paul long enough, you received, if you were Jew, you hung around Paul long enough, you fell right in it. You mean God, you mean I don't have to, I don't have to worry about the law? No, brother. <laughs> You're a new creation. Mm -hmm. The law was done away at, at Calvary. Mm -hmm. That's why when you get in Galatians chapter 2, when Peter was eating and drinking with the Gentiles as though they were brotherly hugging and eating sausage sandwiches, <laughs> eating pig feet and ribs, Peter having a great time. Him and Barnabas, they all sitting back and eating. Give me another one of them ribs, brother. <laughs> and then the, then get, the, out, get out the pork loin. <laughs> Yo. And then the Jew showed up. <laughs> Kim, you got <laughs> you got <laughs> you got got more pig feet in the jar. <laughs> I'm sure that's what he said. Hey, hey, give, give me another pig. <laughs> you guys got more pig feet. And then somebody run in the room and say, hey, James and the guys from Jerusalem here. What should I walk? Peter and the guys from Jerusalem here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Peter and, I mean, uh, not Peter. James and the guys from Jerusalem here. What? So much so that even Barnabas, who'd been with Paul for years, was taken back in that silliness. You need to read that from the understanding of the mystery. We don't read that because most devil has deceived so many in religion. Our good brothers and sisters that I know are still deceived with that whole idea. <laughs> Get the sausage out. Oh, no, no, not another ham sandwich. Wait till they leave. <laughs> Is that kind of like the bat? somebody that would proclaim to be Baptist drinking, drinking a mixed drink and somebody from the church showing up? No, that's, that's, it's, it's stronger than that. It's a person who, who, who believes, who follows the Baptist church going every Sunday, but yet on, the, on, on, on one day during the week they start speaking in tongues. <laughs> Uh oh, the, bro the brothers from. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I wasn't really, I wasn't speaking in tongues. That, that, we don't believe in that. Give my favorite word foolishness. Foolishness. <laughs> foolishness, Rhonda. Foolishness. Anyway, go ahead on, babe. Okay, shall. His gospel was for everyone, but it was primarily to the Gentiles, Paul's was. Mm -hmm. It was a gospel that came by revelation to Paul from Christ himself. That's why he said in two places, uh, Ephesians 3, 1 to 3, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words. And then you already said Colossians 1.27. Right, right. Should I read it again? No. Okay. Uh, the gospel Paul preached, or my gospel, as he put it, had another unique quality. It goes back before the foundation of the world. This was something few, if any, writers of the Bible talked about. 
Paul would confirm this by saying, Romans 16, 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That's, that's a powerful statement. God ordained this, what, this hidden mystery unto our glory before the world began. That's awesome. That is just, keep reading. I'm, I'm, I'm taken back by that whole idea. Keep going. 1 Timothy 1, nine. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 1.9. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. That's another word, verse that takes me back. He said, God saved us with a holy calling, which means a separate calling from any other creature. Angels don't have the calling. Dogs, cats, and animals don't have the calling. Cows, horses, and chickens don't have the calling. He said, a holy calling, not according to our works, which means we had nothing to do with the calling. We had nothing to do with the calling, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he, which was given us in Christ before the world began. In other words, we had a calling that was given to us before we were created. So therefore, nobody could answer it but us. When you have a calling that started before you came along, then no one else can answer that call but you. That's in Christ. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, babe. Titus 1, 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Ephesians 1, 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay. <clears throat>